What's up everybody? In this video, we're going to talk about where should you start with your digital marketing. So if you're thinking about expanding your digital marketing, if you're thinking about, you know, what should I focus on first, especially if you're not super comfortable with uh, your strategy and you're not quite sure what to do, this is going to be a great video for you. I'm going to break down a hierarchy of needs that you need to meet so that you're going to have the most effective strategy possible. I think that it's important that you consider and strategize, you know, what assets should you have in place first and then what should you focus on first and what should you move into? Because there's a lot of advice out of there, there's a lot of tactics and strategies, so it can be really, really confusing. So let's get into today's video. Hey there everybody, my name is Brandon Brashears. I create daily marketing videos here. So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, this is a great place to do it. So let's talk about digital marketing strategies. Oh, and oh, another thing. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or need help with anything, please comment below. And if you do enjoy this channel, if you want to grow your business, be sure to subscribe here. All right, so let's get into today's video. So where should you begin with digital marketing? You've probably heard and seen a lot of videos or read articles or been to conferences where there's tons of strategies and tactics, you know, things like chatbots and pay-per-click ads and SEO and social media marketing. And within social media marketing, you have Instagram and Facebook and, uh, you know, LinkedIn and Snapchat and other social networks too. So where should you get started and what's going to help you get the most bang for the buck? I think number one, you need to have first a good home base in general. So you need to have a website for your brand or your business. If you don't have a website set up, I think that that number one is the place that you need to send people to. And typically, you know, owning your own kind of asset that you can drive people to, that you can create offers on, and that you can use as a tool to drive business. So if you have, you know, a brand that's like a personal brand that you're growing, maybe you're a content creator or something like that, you're gonna have a very different type of needs and different you know offerings than you would if you were like a landscaper or service professional or selling actual physical products but you know regardless of what it is that you're you're selling to your audience i think it's super important that you have a place to send them if you don't have a website that's set up you're just so far behind um so that's number one that needs to be set up as soon as possible so your website should have, and I'm going to do a video in depth on elements that your website absolutely needs to have, but you need to have a way for people to contact you. It should load fast and be responsive. So it shows up in both um, mobile as well as desktop versions. And then it should be editable so you can add content to it so that um, basically you can continue to give reasons for your, your audience to go to the website. So if you're going to sell things additionally, so if you want to sell physical products or sell membership type things or sell courses or get somebody to book an appointment with you, those kind of things should also be set there. Now, I think having a general good website that looks professional that will help to build your brand and be brand consistent is super important. The second thing that I think is very, very important that you have figured out is you need to have a clear offer in mind of things that you're trying to sell. So if you're a service business, it's going to look different than if you're an e-commerce business, obviously. But you need to be clear on who your, your audience is and what are the offers that you're going to be selling. And then you need to create the offers and have a way for people to actually take them up, basically. So you need to make sure that people can actually buy the product or service that you're trying to sell in general. Um, and I know that that sounds crazy, but it's actually amazing how many times I talk to people, they, they have offers, they have things, and they're always just, you know, like they'll do consulting, for example, and they won't have the uh, way for people to buy on their website. They'll have to go in and they'll create a custom link and they'll send it out. And then all of that additional work, it makes it difficult to scale. And then you're constantly, you know, working on sending out links and creating proposals and doing things. If you have a website that's set up, you're going to be able to just scale a lot more easily. One thing like, you know, for example, with, with my own website, I used to do this all the time too, is when people would schedule a time with me, I didn't have my automation set up so that um, people would automatically get their Zoom link that they wanted to get. Um, and so they'd be ready for the, the meeting and I'd forget to send it to them and then I'd have to scramble and start a meeting and send them a thing. And so setting up ways for people to take offers to do it without you having to create more work for yourself is going to help you to close so much more business and be very, very important for you. So number one, website. Number two, you need to have an offer 
and a way for people to actually take, you know, pay you for your products or your services. So that being said, those are, I think, are the number one and number two most important things. After that, I think that the number three most important thing in the hierarchy of needs is that you need to have email marketing follow-up and text messaging on top of that too, if you can, if that's appropriate. But at a minimum, you need an email marketing system. So you need a, a way to collect leads on your website. You need a tool that can generate leads for you, like a lead magnet, a white paper, a case study, a webinar, something like that. And then you need to actually communicate with your email list. So setting up the automations with an email is time consuming, typically, especially if you're not super familiar with the email marketing software that you're going to use. But you should absolutely do this because it is a system that once you set it up, it runs in the background and it helps to do a lot of the work that you would normally have to do in person. So all of these tools that I'm talking about within digital marketing are systems specifically. And these are going to help you to grow and scale. And once you set them up, they're good and they run without you having to do the work. So typically with email marketing, there's a few things that I like to have in place. Number one is I like to have an indoctrination sequence, which right away when anybody signs up on my email list, they get this indoctrination sequence and it tells them exactly what they can expect, kind of delivers what the core values are that we're going to be working around and then also how often they can expect to hear from me. So that's, I think, very, very important for setting proper expectations and also drawing people in further to building a relationship with you. Um, so that helps them to understand they need to open your emails and here's why it's so important they open your emails. It also helps them to get um, bounced around to the different social sites that we have and social properties that we have. So that's super, super important. If you have a good indoctrination sequence and a clear path in email specifically to go from a stranger to somebody who gets basically goes through your, your customer value journey of not knowing about you to becoming aware of you, understanding what your offer is, being able to purchase that offer and what, what's in it for them, and then ascending them up upsells and, and drawing them in. When you have an email funnel that works well, it's just going to produce so much more results for you. Um, so that being said, I think that if you're running ads and you don't have this set up, it's time to set that up because you're going to get so much more out of it. I won't run ads for clients until I have these things set up. I need to have a clear website. I need to have a clear offer. We need to have an email uh, follow-up campaign. Additionally, it's good to have follow-up campaigns inside of social media that you're going to be doing retargeting and all of that bottom of funnel work that you really need to be doing. If you're not sure what funnels are, check out this video. I did a, a video on what is a marketing funnel and it broke down each one of the steps, the top, middle, and bottom of funnel. And I explained what is important in each one of those steps. But having those retention systems to sell, to re-engage, to resell your current customers is so important. It's going to make all of the marketing that you do on the top of the funnel so much more effective. So having that set up is absolutely necessary. After that, I think that the fourth most important thing is that you need to have content. Content is king. It's so true. That's been the saying for like 10 years. But for some reason, businesses still don't make enough content. You should be making content every single week, if you can, every single day. Content is what lets you communicate with your clients and customers at scale. And that being said, you know, people think, oh, you know, I don't have time for content. It's not something that I can fit into my schedule. But if you want to grow your business without having to physically, you know, reach out and do one on one work and one on one sales with your customers and your clients, content is the thing that's going to do that. So your content should be segmenting, right? It's going to attract the right group of people. It's going to be built for the right person. If you haven't checked out the video about the three questions I talk about before running ads, check that out there because it really helps you define who your client is for. What I mean, what the client is that you're doing and what kind of uh, marketing and content you want to have around that. But content is what makes or breaks a company when it comes to um, re-engaging and driving people through your funnel. And so I, I see this as a huge weakness for most small businesses. So you need to have content. It's incredibly important that your content is doing the work to get people to the point where they want to buy, where they know, like, and trust you. They see you there consistently. 
it just it helps you to build relationships with people that are going to be clients and customers. So once we have website, an offer, and a way for people to pay you, and then email so that you can follow up, retain, and ascend those customers and clients, and then content to attract, segment, and drive people into your funnels, the, the last step, I think, is having a solid social um, profile and, you know, the, the top of funnel awareness type things that you should have set up. So driving engagement with pay-per-click ads, um, driving engagement with um, boosting your content out there and, and getting your, your content boosted out um, is what's important. So I think that typically working from the bottom of the funnel up to the top of the funnel is really, really helpful and it helps you to get uh, clarity around what you should be doing for your brand or your business. Now, if you're having trouble crafting your message and if you're having trouble trying to figure out you know, exactly what kind of content you should be making or how to make your content stand out, check out this video I did about the long tail. I think it's so important that you're identifying who you want to be serving and you're creating content specifically for that one group of people. Um, it doesn't, you don't only have to serve that group of people, but you should be creating content for micro groups of people. Um, and I think it's going to help you to stand out a lot more, be way more effective with your marketing and cut through all of the noise that's out there. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'd love to know, do you think that I'm wrong? Do you think any of these should be another order? I would love to know what your thoughts are. And, uh, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, comment below with any questions that you have. If you want me to cover any video um, topics as well, be sure to let me know and don't forget to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again soon. Have a great day, everybody.